is because it seemed to be quite fitting based on the, uh, the times and what's going on in everybody's lives right now, what everybody is focused on, which happens to be a quote unquote natural disaster has to do with a virus, a little bitty virus. But it's surprising how everything is all interconnected. And that's what this story of the Lorax speaks to, that how everything is interconnected, that it's all one world, we're just living in it. So I'm going to move over just a little bit over here. Ah, yes, that's much better. Okay, and we'll go ahead on with the story of the Lorax. And it's also uh, uh, a proponent or a um, promoter of the idea of uh, ecology, being kind to the environment. What can people do to help the environment uh, be bene remain beneficial to humankind as well as other animals also, right? Because um, if we don't take care of the planet, who will? If not us, then who? If not now, then when? So now's the time. Let's go ahead and check out this story with the whole another rhyme. Oops, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong story. That's all the places we'll go. And we're not on that. Ah, there we go. The Lorax. One of my favorite stories from way back when. I always loved Dr. Seuss. He's one of my favorite authors to read to the children as well as to uh, read for myself. Okay, I learn a lot every time I read it. So this was originally published 1971. The Lorax. At the far end of town where the grico grass grows. And the wind smells slow and sour when it blows. And no birds ever sing except an old crows. Is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grico grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today. Where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could, before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the end, the far end of town where the grico grass grows, the old onceler still lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the onceler, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of Miff Mufford Moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather's nail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snub, his secret strange hold in his groveless glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slup down slups the whisper of my phone to your ear and the old ones, those whispers are near, not very clear since they have to come down through a snuggly hose and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now, I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding great, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back, way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swampy swans rang out in space. One morning, I came down to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffle of trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle of trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloo suits. And as they played in the shade and a truffle of fruits from the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffle of trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk 
and they had this sweet smell of fresh flutter by milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truck full of tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuck and I knitted a knead. The instant I finished, I heard a good zump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him that's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. It needs to find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, or bicycle sheet seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that this need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunzler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left at Weehawken, shot right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunzler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting knees just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh, baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now, chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, <coughs> which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. <coughs> <laughs> but I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who played in the shade of their barbaloot suits <laughs> and happily lived eating truffle tr fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle fruit to go round. And my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies and mummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of this needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs. And I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax. He coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snarkled and sniffed. Once he cried with a cruffless croak. Once Lee, you're making such smogless smoke. My poor swami swans, why he can't sing a note? No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. 
They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year. To escape from this smog, you smog up around here. What's more, snap the Lorax is dander was up. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup also sloppity slop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old onceler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for the gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary like old Lake Erie up here in Ohio. They just about bought it, but I know that they ought not. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lord. Now listen here, Dad. All, do, all you do is yap, yap and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my right, sir. And I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on bigger and then bigger and then bigger and then bigger and turning more truffle of trees into needs, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud, loud whack from outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an ax on a tree then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle tree of them all. No more trees, no more knees, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all wave me goodbye. Goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smogged stars. Now all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax. And I, the Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very side, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hasted himself and took leave of this place through a little hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small, a small pile of rocks with one word, U-N-L-E-S-S, -S, unless. Whatever that meant, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while my buildings have fallen apart. I worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the onceler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot. Nothing is going to get better. It's not. So Ketch calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle of seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle of seeds. And truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle up, treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest protected from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. At least that's what I would like to think. But I know that we're standing right at the brink. And if we're not careful, we'll fall right off into the drink. So we need to move back away from the brink. We need to come down. We need to think differently. We need to think more friendly of the earth because it's the place from which we gained our birth. That's why we call it earth and we go all around its girth. Recycle, reuse, reduce or reduce, reuse, recycle. However you want to say it, we definitely got to play it. We got to play that tune because otherwise we're going to be like a loon. And have you ever seen a loon? No, you haven't because they're probably extinct. Just like the Lorax, the Barbaloots, and the Swami Swans. They're all gone. So unless we want to have suffered the very same fate, we'll 
reduce, reuse, and recycle right here in our place. And please remember when you do, do not recycle the caps or that little strip right there at the top of the bottle. You shouldn't ought to put it in the can because it doesn't belong. That's why the Chinese, the Melanesians, the Asians, they don't even want our old recycled plastic because they say they can't use it. All it does is give them the blues. So if we don't want to lose and have to bury all that stuff, then we need to follow directions and reduce, reuse, and recycle properly. So now that you know all about the Lorax, what I'd like you to do is have a good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs right bite. We'll see you next time with a brand new rhyme. Who knows what we'll read next time? Hmm. You just never know. But we'll come back. We got a few more Dr. Seuss to read. Not right now, but maybe sometime in the future. In the future, make sure to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button at the bottom or hit the like button. Like us, subscribe, become a member.